Hello colorful quilters and welcome back to Color Girl on YouTube. I am super excited for today's video. We are going to do an introduction to my favorite ruler, the classic curved ruler. This tool is going to make curved piecing so simple and so quick. You're going to be surprised at how easily you can pick up and master curved piecing and how easy it is to do the cuts and get nice accurate pieces with the classic curves ruler. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the ruler, show you around and how it works, and te teach you how to cut some basic drunkard's path blocks. Okay, first of all, the way that the ruler works, it has 10 slots for cutting different size pieces. So as you can see behind me, I have my design wall up today because I want to show you all 10 of the different sizes, everything from four inches up to eight and a half inches. And you can cut all of the different blocks that you want in all of these different sizes, okay? If you want to get a classic curves ruler, if you don't have one yet, you'll find them at your local quilt shop. Um, you can ask for them there, or you'll also find them on my website, colorgirlquilts.com in the shop. And you'll also see lots of different patterns and things that you can make with it to give you ideas there as well. Okay, so I can't wait to show you this wonderful tool and get you started on curved piecing. Let's do the basics and we'll go on from there. Okay, as you can see, the ruler comes in a thin pa plastic packaging that keeps the, the insert attached to it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this new one. Gosh, it's tight. Okay, here we go. It's always fun to open up a new tool, right? Okay. Okay, so we have the instruction um, pamphlet that comes with it includes instructions for using the ruler, some basic cutting techniques, pinning and sewing, um, some troubleshooting, as well as instructions to make um, a simple little drunkard's path quilt. So these are the blocks that I'm gonna show you how to make here today. And um, just a, it's a really good um, way to get started because it's a nice big block. Um, they're six and a half inches. And um, so make sure that when you get started with your ruler, go ahead and read through these instructions to get an idea, um, your way around it, and a good place to get started to practice before you set about something more complicated. Okay, so the ruler itself, like I said before, there are these 10 cutting grooves that reflect different sizes that you can cut. And it's a little bit hard not to have a reflection on there, but hopefully you can see that there are two symbols down here in the corner. One of them corresponds with the convex curve shape. That's this one. It's kind of like, um, it represents this inside part, the convex curve. And then you have a shape here that represents the concave curve shape. So you're gonna be able to cut both of these shapes with the same tool. And the brilliant thing is that your shapes um, contain the, in, include the seam allowance so that when you go to sew them together, you get these nice smooth um, seams and flat blocks and without all of the headaches and difficulties um, that some people um, associate with curved piecing. This is gonna make it so much easier, so don't be afraid, okay? So if you think about whenever you're cutting the piece that corresponds with this shape, you're going to line that fabric up with these lines on the ruler, okay? So what you're paying most attention to are the lines and where they cross these um, mar these grooves for cutting the different size curve. So in our example, we are going to be using the six and a half inch groove to cut a six and a half inch block. So it will finish six inches. So that's what we're paying attention to, where this line crosses the six and a half inch groove. That's going to give us the correct length 
of our curve. Okay, when we're cutting the convex, or excuse me, the concave shape, this shape that goes on the outside, we're going to be paying attention to lining the fabric up with these lines on the ruler, and in our case, where it corresponds with the six and a half inch groove. So you cut both of your pieces, both the convex and the concave, with the same measurement. The difference is that you line them up with the different lines corresponding with the shape. So if it helps you to imagine that this half inch in between the lines corresponds to your seam allowance. Okay, so let's start with the convex shape. And to, to do a six and a half inch convex shape, I am going to start with a square that's the same size that I'm cutting. So in my case, I have six and a half inch squares. I'm gonna do two at once by putting one on top of the other. And you can, you can stack as many as you feel comfortable cutting. You may wanna just do one to start out with and make sure that it's correct. Okay, so I've got my two squares. I'm gonna place my ruler so that I'm cutting this shape so my fabric lines up with those lines on the ruler. Okay, and you can see my six and a half inch cutting groove is right out here at the corner because it's a six and a half inch square. I'm gonna get out my rotary cutter. I just use my regular 45 inch. You can get a smaller one if you feel more comfortable, but it's fine to use the larger one. And just find my six and a half inch groove and make that cut. Okay, that gives me a scrap here and two of my shapes that are now ready to piece. Okay, so I'm gonna set those aside till I'm ready to sew. And for my concave shape, for the piece that's going to go to the outside of my curve, I'm going to start with a square that is eight inches. Okay, so that's one and a half inches larger than my cutting measurement of six and a half. Okay, first thing to do, you're gonna fold it in half on the diagonal so that you get a triangle. Now this is a really important point to make that you have your triangle lined up with the right angle on your ruler. Okay, or excuse me, on your cutting mat. So it shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be like a mountain. You don't wanna cut like this. You want it to be like this so that you're cutting at right angles to the sides of the, of the triangle. And I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so get your, your, your square folded. Then you're going to take your ruler and like I said before, cut at a right angle to the side of your triangle and cut one inch from the folded corner. And turn your piece over and do the same thing again. Cut one inch from the folded corner. What this is going to do is give us a piece that's shaped like this with, with an inch cut out of two of the corners. Okay, so leave your piece folded and if just if it gives you a better idea of what we're looking at here, um, imagine that those two edges that you just cut the inch out of are going to be the ends of the curve. So that's kind of like this portion of the piece that you're cutting. Okay, so those are the ends of the curve. And like I told you before, since we're cutting the concave shape, we're going to line those end pieces of the curve, those end pieces of the fabric with these lines on the ruler. Okay, can you see how the six and a half inch groove where it crosses the concave line on the ruler is right at the inside of my folded edge. All right, so let's take my cutter and cut through that again. And that's gonna give us a piece like this, which is a scrap for now. 
and it's going to give us two of the concave shapes. And if I go back to those pieces that I cut the first time, you'll see how when I go to put them together, they fit together and they have a half inch overlap, which corresponds with your um, quarter inch seam allowance. You have a, a quarter inch on each, a total of a half, and these are ready to piece. Okay, let's piece these two together. First of all, take one of your fabrics and fold it in half, bringing the two ends of the curve together and crease it in the middle to mark the center. You can't really see that probably on the video, but there's a crease in the center there. And then I'm going to fold the ends of the curve in and crease those points too on each side. And that gives me three points on the curve plus the two ends. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other piece, only this time I'm going to match those points as I, as I find them. So I'll crease that. Can you, can you see a little better on the white fabric that there's a crease there? And I'm gonna match that up with the first fabric, okay? And then fold the outside edge in find that point and match it up with the crease on the first fabric and pin that as well and also the end okay same thing on the other side bring one end of the curve into the center and pinch it to crease and match that up with the crease on the first fabric. I need a pin cushion, don't I? <laughs> it's hard, sometimes hard to get them out of these little containers. Okay, and then also the ends of that curve. And you'll notice that I'm making sure that the straight sides of my pieces match and are, and are square. You don't wanna do it so that they're crossing like that or so that they're at any kind of angle. Um, manipulate your fabric enough that you get nice straight lined up edges. Okay, so that's going to be that piece and now it's ready to sew. Here we go. I have my sewing machine set on a quarter inch um, for seam allowance and I've got my piece that I just pinned here and first of all I am going to just put that end in just like I ordinarily would put my presser foot down okay so first of all just sew a couple of stitches and I'm going to set my machine at needle down so that it makes it easy to adjust and stop as I approach pins or if I need to turn the fabric okay so I'm going to take that first pin out and as you can see, I hold the top fabric with my thumb and forefinger here. That allows me to kind of, to guide it and keep it lined up with the fabric underneath as I sew. Sometimes you have to use your other, your other hand to kind of flatten out the fabric and keep those edges lined up. You want to be careful that you're keeping your edges lined up, but you're not pulling on the fabric or stretching it at all. I am literally just using the tips of my fingers to guide the fabric through, but not pulling on it. Kind of push that into place and hold that there so that that one lays down flat. Can you see how I stop periodically and um, to allow the fabric to, to shift? 
so that I don't, I'm not constantly pushing it toward the end with my presser foot. If you stop periodically and you have the needle down, your presser foot rises a little bit and allows the fabric to shift um, just slightly so that it stays where it's supposed to. Okay, now I have my piece that I just sewed at the ironing board and I am going to just gently press this um, again without pushing or pulling on it. Um, you don't want to stretch your piece at all. Just kind of set it out there and then use the end of your iron to kind of carefully push it out. I typically like to press my pieces toward the convex or excuse me toward the concave shape. Um, I find that the finished blocks lay flatter that way and don't look as bulgy and bulky for some reason. Now there are going to be situations where you may need to press in toward the, the convex shape for, shape for some reason, um, but as a general rule try to press outward and you'll get a nice flat um, smooth block, nice smooth seam. Okay, so this is my six and a half inch Drunkard's Path block. Um, the next step uh, that you that you'll need to do for um, to complete your block is to trim and square it. Now this one turned out pretty nicely um, right off the bat, and this is why I encourage you, if you're new to curved piecing, to start with larger blocks because the gradual curves are easier to sew and easy for instant gratification. But every once in a while, when you're sewing curves, you'll notice that the pieces will get a little bit skewed. Sometimes these edges bulge a little bit just because they get out of square as you're sewing um, on the bias edge and then pressing. Okay, so thankfully the pieces are forgiving because in the end we're going to square all of our blocks up to the same size and seam allowance so that they look really nice in our quilt when we sew them all together. So let's go ahead and go and trim this one up and make it nice and square. Okay, now it is time to trim and square our blocks. Typically we'll sew a whole bunch of blocks, like all the blocks that we needed for our, need for our quilt, and then go back and trim and square them all at the same time. And what this does is it gives us a chance to make sure that all of our blocks are the same size and have the same amount of seam allowance outside of all of the curved shapes. So that when we go to sew them together, they fit really nicely. Okay, so the key is to make sure that you do them all the same. Some of this is going to depend on your personal preference and the pattern that you're working from. You may want to trim your, your blocks down to just barely a quarter of an inch outside of the curve shape so that when you sew them together they butt right up next to each other and you don't see any of this, this background fabric at these points. Um, for this particular block, we are going to leave about a half inch to the outside so that when we sew our blocks together, it'll create a circle, but there'll be about a quarter of an inch of background fabric all the way around. So that's just going to be, um, that's going to vary depending on the pattern you're working from. Sometimes you may leave more space here if you're wanting more of this fabric to show. Okay, so the first thing to do is take our ruler, place it on the piece, and since my block is six and a half, um, that's the size that I'm going to trim it to. And what I want you to think about this is that we aren't just going to line up the, the ruler with two sides and then cut the other two sides off. What we're doing is cutting a six and a half inch square basically out of the center of the block that we've sewn. Okay, this one has quite a bit of extra um, built into the piecing so that you cut um, about an eighth to a quarter of an inch off all the way around, but some of them will be less than that and some you'll barely trim at all. But okay, so here is the six and a half inch corner on my ruler. Okay, so a couple of things to check very first. I'm going to leave a half inch at the ends of each of the, uh, 
at each end of the curve, okay? So I have my half inch line lined up with where my green and white fabric meet. Okay, the second thing that I want to check is to make sure the amount of fabric that's outside of my six and a half inch line, which is what I'm going to be cutting off eventually, is pretty uniform around the entire block. So I wouldn't want to have it set like this where I cut a lot off this side and almost none off of this side. I want to have that pretty well centered so that um, I have around an eighth to a quarter of an inch um, the same amount on this side and going down here okay and around the same amount here and here can you see how that's pretty pretty uniform all the way around so I've got a half inch to the outside of my curves on each end and I've got a little over an eighth inch of fabric to the outside to be cut off okay so let's make those first cuts and then turn my piece over again and essentially do the same thing only it's much easier now because I can take my six and a half inch line and match it up with the piece the edges that I already cut and you can see again I've got a half inch at each end and about an eighth inch to the outside to cut off so I know I've got it pretty even okay what that does as you work through your blocks if you're doing them all the same that will make it so that when you go to sew your blocks together they are going to fit really nicely you've got the same amount of fabric here so you can see when I sew these together I'm gonna get a nice smooth curve all the way around I can make a full circle I can make a half circle I can do three-fourths um, a lot of different shapes and twist and turn and um, play a lot with the layout and makes for a really fun um, interesting design so if we go back to the package on our ruler the instructions are for making this little baby quilt and it's for these blocks and as you can see there's an arrangement on here that's suggested but you can also rearrange them twist and turn them and um, set them together exactly how you want all right, what do you think? Are you surprised at how er easy curved piecing can be? I have fallen in love with curved piecing and I hope that you'll enjoy it as much as I do. There are so many fun patterns to use and so many different shapes that you can make. Um, so today we made a little drunkard's path block and play around with um, how you can put these together because they're a really versatile little block that you can mix and match. You can make a whole circle so you could do something like this with a whole circle you can turn some and make it look like you have circles outside of circles that go back like that play around with using different background fabrics like it shows on the pattern on your ruler so that some are dark some are light you could do them all different there's so many different possibilities. I even think that this is fun having them all going the same direction, right? So that's super cute. And it's gonna look completely different depending on the colors that you choose, how you mix the, the, the background and, the, four and the, the colored fabric versus the background or have it reversed. So play around, see which layout is your favorite. I hope that you enjoy making these fun little blocks. And I hope that you love the Classic Curves Ruler. It really does make your cutting much quicker, much easier, and your pieces fit together beautifully for super fun curvy quilts. Remember, if you need to get your, your Classic Curves Ruler, you'll find one on my website. It's colorgirlquilts.com. And there's also lots of patterns to try there. You'll be surprised at all the different shapes and sizes you can cut with just this one tool. Okay, thanks for tuning in today and happy curved piecing. See you next time.